Hey there. Did you know that baseball is about to be changed forever? And it's because of a pandemic? It's not COVID. There's another pandemic that's been going on for about two decades that uh, most people don't know about. And this one's looking like it's gonna have a mortality rate of 100%. Thankfully, this one doesn't involve humans. I'm talking about the emerald ash borer. It's a beetle from Asia that was introduced into North America and Europe in the early 2000s. And it's been steadily spreading ever since leaving a trail of dead ash trees in its wake. Here's a chunk of ash that I've had air drying for quite a while. Ash trees make up 15 to 20 percent of the forests in most areas of the U.S. Ash is a hardwood, common and well known to woodworkers, similar in appearance to oak but lighter in color. It has open pores like oak and splits very easily. It's used for floors, furniture, cabinets, and its most notable special use, baseball bats. It's also used for hockey sticks, oars, molding and millwork, and food containers, as it doesn't impart any taste to food in contact with it like some wood species do. Ash has been the king for baseball bats since baseball has been a sport. It has just the right density so as not to be too heavy or too light. It's springy enough to help launch the ball a good distance. An oak bat would be heavier making it harder to swing, stiffer not having as much spring when it contacts the ball, and wouldn't hit the ball as far. As the supply of ash declines, uh, companies are turning towards maple and birch to make bats, but many players feel that those woods are inferior. Emerald ash borer beetle lays its eggs on the bark, which hatch in seven to ten days. The larvae then bore into the tree, consuming the inner layers of bark where the nutrients and water are transported, and destroy that area, thereby killing the tree. There are some attempts to try and save the ash trees. There are insecticides that trees can be treated with to protect them from borers. I have seven ash trees in my yard, two of which we have treated to protect them. All of them are dead or dying except these two. This one provides shade and a nice view out of our kitchen window, so we'd like to preserve that. This one is just massive. It has a circumference right here of almost 11 feet, 130 inches. Who knows how old it is, but I know one thing, it's older than you. I'd say it's at least 200 years. Hiring an arborist to treat both of these trees costs $750. They drill around the roots and inject an insecticide that prevents the larva from being able to bore into the tree and survive. That has to be done every two years, if it works at all. Nobody knows for sure. Thankfully, in our area, there's a program that subsidizes this, so we only had to pay half of that, so 375. The hope is that after the rest of the ash trees die, the beetles will die back for lack of food, and then I'll be able to let these two trees live in isolation uh, without further treatment. It's interesting to me that trees are so susceptible to disease. Other tree pandemics have completely wiped certain species out. Even the worst diseases of humans don't come close. I've read that it's because trees have very low genetic diversity when compared to other organisms. Take for instance the worst pandemic in human history, the bubonic plague. 
It killed 30 to 60% of Europe and reduced the world's population by 20%. Horrible to say the least, but still nowhere near 100% mortality. Here's a whole cluster of ash trees. Just a couple years ago, these were nice and healthy. And now they are all dead. This one's still alive, but not looking good. And right here you can see the borer holes. They are typically a D shape like that. And that's where the larva went in and started boring inside the tree. Once there's a bunch of larvae in the tree, the woodpeckers will come and strip the bark off of the tree in areas like that. They call that blonding. Maybe we will find a lucky few ash trees that have resistance and can survive. These could be cultivated and replanted all over our country to regrow these massive stately trees. Maybe. So take a look at the forests around you. You will likely see many dying or dead trees. Most of those are going to be ash trees. Maybe some will survive, but so far it's not looking good. Chances are, like the American elm and the American chestnut, we're going to be saying goodbye to the ash trees forever.